Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a quick look at why we use short fat IVs for massive resuscitation. This will be as quick and painless as getting stuck with a 24 gauge IV. So in order to understand this, we need to remember back to physics and look at what's called Poussel's Law. I'm very difficult for me to pronounce. And this states that flow rate, which is Q, is equal to pi times pressure times radius to the fourth over eight times fluid viscosity, which is denoted by the theta times L or length of tubing. So when placing any type of line, we need to establish what about this equation we can manipulate as practitioners. Pi, as we know, is a universal constant. So really nothing that we can do about that. Radius is a manipulatable number in that we have a choice of IV access, we can affect the flow. Doubling the radius of tubing will increase the flow rate by a factor of 16 because it's to the fourth in this equation. And this is a result of larger tubing allowing for smaller amounts of surface area for total volume of fluid to interact with the tubing. The more fluid that interacts with tubing, uh, the more friction. So if we can decrease that by making the tubing radius larger, more fluid will flow faster. This is why bigger, thicker IV gauges such as 16 and 14 are used for resuscitation in trauma or preemptively placed in patients that you expect large volume losses in. Pressure up top is also one of our manipulatable factors in that, yes, we can just hang a bag of fluid, but we can also squeeze the bag or put the bag in a pressure sleeve, which can inflate to a desired pressure to squeeze the bag for us. Or we can hook the bag up to a level one transfusion machine, which will automatically squeeze our blood bags for us in massive transfusion protocols. And so as you can see in the numerator, by increasing the pressure, our flow rate goes up. By increasing our radius, our flow rate goes up. They are proportional. Now in the denominator, eight is a constant again. So really nothing we can do about that. But believe it or not, fluid viscosity is actually a changeable factor. Normal saline, LR, plasmolite, all these things have a constant viscosity, which we can't really change. But products like blood and plasma, which are thicker, they also have an innate viscosity constant. But this may be a trick you've seen. We can make them less viscous. So if you've ever seen the uh, filter in the operating room and it has two hoses and then your IV tubing and then your next part of the tubing, and this here is your filter in the middle. And we will say that your NS is here and your blood is here. What we can actually do is we can let the blood hang. So it's down here, hanging like this. And we're gonna go ahead and open our clamps here and here and we're going to go ahead and close our clamps here and this will force the overall flow from the normal saline into the blood this makes the blood product a mixture of blood and saline which overall decreases the fluids viscosity as a result so viscosity is a semi manipulatable manipulatable factor in this equation finally we have length if we remember back to physics, the longer a track or tubing, the longer and more resistance created to flow as a function of increased time of interaction with the walls of something which increases your friction in the surrounding tubing. Therefore, short IV tubing allows for faster flow rates. So things that are in the denominator of this equation, length, as length goes up, flow goes down. As length goes down, flow goes up, viscosity goes up, things get thicker. And again, if you just kind of think about these things, the thicker blood is, the thicker a fluid is, the harder it's going to be to move it faster. So taking all of these things into consideration and explains why we do things when we do them when resuscitating a patient in trauma or in the operating room and by manipulating the factors that we can. We can first put in short fat IVs, decrease the viscosity of our blood products by mixing them with saline or less viscous fluids and apply pressure to actively promote flow into the patient. 
So that's all for Pucelle's Law. I hope this cleared it up. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or are interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video.